What's up, everybody? We are at SHOT Show 2024 with the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Glesser at the Spider Co. booth. And we are talking about some of the most bodacious new knives yeah. in the entire world. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Eric, how are you? Good. Thanks Good. for coming in. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. We saw a lot of really cool stuff out of Reveal 14. And let's jump right in. Right on. Be so, easy with the table. I know you're excited, but <laughs> I am excited. it's a little shaky here. Yeah. Don't don't knock over the table. All right. We'll try to be above, waiter yep. style. Yeah. So, let us discuss the Spider Co. Uh, <laughs> so this is the Spy Mito. Spy Mito. Okay. Yes. I was going to um, say that looked like a lion the steel, lion steel Mito. Mito. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, so we took the lion steel Mito and we spiderized it. Usually when you think spiderized, you think round hole, yeah. ease of one hand opening, and then that hourglass clip. Um, okay. So that's really the spiderizing of the Mito. Um, it is a flash batch, by the way. If you don't know what flash batches are, it's an all new tooling for a knife that we only make one batch of. Um, so this is a 2,000 piece run and then we're done. Okay. Um, Canvas Micarta M398. It has a ball bearing, so it has great action. It does have the flipper as well, if you want to use the flipper action. And, and the flipper is removable. That's that's a lion steel trait. Because yeah. I know in a lot of places that you have legality issues with flippers. Right. But you can. I, I would just leave it right on there. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it the way it is. Uh, the beauty of the knife and the construction and the quality. Uh, it's such a joy to get to work with Lion on these types of knives. Um, I do anticipate it'll probably go pretty quick. Um, yeah. But it is a real user too. Though it's so beautiful with those top-notch materials. If, if you're going to carry and use a knife, it fits the hand well. Strong lock, you can go to town on it. Good mm -hmm. blade stock, good bevels. High quality. And I love those crown spines. I know, I That's do That's one of my favorite things they do in Italy. Yeah, you work on it all day long. Yeah, it feels great for the thumb. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. And you said M398. Yeah. How is that different from regular M390? Uh, they bumped up the carbon a little bit. I do know that. So they're trying to get a little bit more wear resistance. Uh, we're early in the market with it. We did bring a M398. Uh, mule team to the market mm -hmm. um, that gave people a, um, a good opportunity to use some of the steel see what they like about it uh, we're honing in on it a little bit more now yeah um, so we think that we're you know creeping up on maybe a little bit better of a heat treat than our mule team because um, that's like really that. important to us these days is the the heat treats um, but it, it's been performing well I would say it's as good as m390 um, and possibly even better so it, it's definitely a new flavor well I hope to see more of it in the future because I mean, if, if you hear it out of Eric Gluster's mouth that it is going to be better than M390, you know it's true. Well, it's early stages. It <laughs> well, M390 has been on the market for years with a wonderful reputation. And any new steel, I like to give it a year or two before I definitively say that. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, I do believe that with our early testing, it does look like it's going to jump higher, run faster. Showing some promise. Yeah. I love to hear it. Speaking of new steels that are set to jump high and run fast, yep. we've got some Magna Cut over yep. on Paramilitary 2 now. Yeah, I thank everybody for your patience on the Magna Cut. Um, you know, we were the first in the market to get it uh, out to the consumer with our mule team. Very proud of that. Um, then we learned a lot about it. That's what the mule team is all about. And so, uh, because it's so corrosive resistant, um, and we wanted to creep up on a, an optimal heat treat, it took us a little longer to get it to the market. Um, but there, we're launching Magna Cut salt knives and just about everything we make in the U.S. Uh, you'll notice it has a different texture on there. Yeah. Um, if you are a fan of the Caribbean, a knife we made years ago, has a very similar texture. It's actually a little improved over the Caribbean. It has that center rib, uh, which gives a great uh, ease in and out of the pocket. Yeah, nice landing zone um, for the clip. Nice uh, rounded edges here. The texture goes all the way and then picks up right at the end so that when you are going in and out of the pocket, that, that edge texture isn't ripping up your pocket. Ooh, um, you've thought of everything. <laughs> uh, with the layer, layered yellow and black too, certainly has its challenges getting that yellow and black layering so it, it machines just right so you get that perfect balance um, yeah. sometimes you know we'll machine the scale and you might not be exposing as much yellow so you might run another pass through the machine just to clean it up a little bit mm -hmm. um, so the yellow and black certainly has its challenges in fabricating machining um, but it brings a lot of pop to the knife great texture great look Great um, visibility too. Yeah. And that comes with a satin blade, blackened hardware. We're blackening the hardware because it adds corrosion resistance to the hardware. Ooh. Though the hardware is incredibly corrosive resistant, why not bump up the corrosion resistance a little bit more and add a coating to this it? This is a so. salt knife after all. Right. Um, so uh, MagnaCut 
can rust. It's not that it is impossible to rust. Something like H2, good luck rusting that. Uh, I'd like that, to meet the guy. <laughs> right. Uh, so it, it doesn't quite hold the, the par of H2, but it is really high in its corrosion resistance, and we felt it was high enough to bring it into the market as a salt. Yeah, so if you're cutting car batteries in the Dead Sea, I'd bring H2. Yes. But, I mean, if you're just fishing out on the ocean, Magnica. I'd sign up for Magnica. Right, I totally agree. <laughs> that's a great analogy. By and the then way, that's the all blacked out version. Yeah, I like that one. This one's got my name on it. I'm going to buy one of these real soon. <laughs> one of the added ones uh, features to the all blacked out version, too, is it still has that peel ply on the top. We weren't okay. able to get the peel ply on the yellow and black because of the, the making of the G10 itself and getting that machining right for the texture. But in the all black version, you get the peel, the peel ply and the bi-directional. Okay. Should we talk about peel ply for a minute? Sure. So my understanding is you get the sheet material, you cut it out, and then there's a peel that you pull off and that reveals that nice coarse texture. Yes, exactly. But when you peel that is different for different companies. Um, honestly, we peel ours a little earlier. We don't wait until after the machining process because we think we're clean enough during the machining process. But the, the idea of the peel ply is yes, it does add the texture and protects it uh, until you need to reveal it, essentially. Yeah, that must be why they're so pristine when you open them up. Man, few things are as beautiful as a new in-box Spyderco. <laughs> and, and you know, peel ply is a big role. You have the coarse, the fine, the ultra fines, and then making that peel ply consistent over a sheet. When you make these composites, they're made in large sheets, some of them eight feet long. And you know, how do you get that peel ply consistent all the way through? There's really only, you know, a few people in the world that can build that quality. And so if you're looking for quality G10, a good indicator of that is the peel ply. Now, like, we'll make peel ply knives in China, like the Tenacious, and you might take out the Paramilitary 2 and the Tenacious and really get a loop and compare those peel plies. And it's a big world there. Does, is one a little bit better than the other? Um, you know, you'll have to look for yourself, but it, it is definitely something we pay attention to. These are the things that keep Eric up at night. Yeah, <laughs> peel ply is a big deal. Yeah, well, while we're on the Paramilitary 2 train and the peel ply train, we've got yes. some new coatings to the Paramilitary 2 as well, correct? We do. They're not launched yet, so I can't tell you exactly what it is. Okay. Um, but for Spyderco, it's been a big deal for us. I briefly touched on this a little bit last year, but we brought a lot of this in-house. Um, mm -hmm. And we're bringing a new coating to the market. The new coating that we're looking towards I guess when you're looking at a coating, the attributes you want is, you know, you want it to be incredibly durable. You want it to get your black coloring like you want it to with, yeah. you know, a dark black, not a light gray. Mm -hmm. um, you'd, when you add a coating, typically you're, it, it adds heat to the knife. And so you can temper the, the steel if you overcook it. And so that really limits what steels you can do, what coatings you can do, and how you fabricate that. So with the new coating that we're bringing to the market, it brings it to at a lower temperature. Um, so it'll give us more variety on the steels we can add it to. And it gives us a little bit more color. It has the same durability as your DLC. But okay. the real joy of it is it has greater lubricity. It's one of the most, the highest lubricity coatings we've ever dealt with. So, like, you're gonna get so low a coefficient of friction that stuff's just gonna fall off. It, it, like, you're gonna slice a banana and just think. It's, it's a joy to work with. Now that sounds we're, awesome. We, we're, we're trying to put some definitive numbers to this, but we think that it might have greater lubricity than the satin blades. So I'll that, believe that when I see right, it. I think so, we might have a field test video coming with yeah, this. Yeah, that would out. be good. <laughs> um, but we're, we're really excited about the new coatings. You can even feel it with the action because that ball bearing is riding on that, that coating as well. So um, excited about bringing new coatings in. It's gonna probably lower the cost of the coated material or our coated knives, increase the performance, give you more availability um, and better lubricity. So yeah, for me personally, uh, over the last year, uh, coatings has is, is, is been a fun fun topic for me. Man, that, that sounds awesome and I think that I think that's gonna be a real killer. They're gonna love the fact that you said it's gonna reduce the costs too. Increase performance for reduced costs. Welcome F to the new guy. We can do like FDE screws in the future. Ooh. Yeah, so it's-, Man, it's the gun nuts would love that. Yeah, coatings, <laughs> coatings is, is uh, on a new renaissance for Spider Cup. Okay. And with all the salt knives too, it's, it's timely because those coatings certainly help the salts. Okay, so we've talked a lot about corrosion resistance here. Yep. With that Magna Cut, the coated hardware, these fancy new coatings. And then here we have uncoated crewware. Yes. 
uh, and the canvas micarta. And, mm -hmm. and so I know a lot of people know about these materials, but your crew wear is going to get a patina on it, tremendous wear resistance, great toughness. And then with the canvas micarta, you might notice how light colored this piece is. Mm -hmm. It's still satin. The more you use that, the darker it's going to get. It's going to get a, a dull uh, finish on the crew wear. A lot of people think you're really beautifying your knife through use. Um, but yeah, we're launching the Military 2. Uh, to take it one step further, um, canvas micarta is not my favorite material. Um, my uh, my father really wanted to make canvas micarta. <laughs> and uh, one he, does not just say no to Southwest. Right. right. <laughs> I fought it though. Um, he wanted to put it on the shaman. Uh, that was the crew wear shaman a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely fought it till the till the end uh, because canvas tends to flex, doesn't have the toughness. Uh, we did some engineering, launched the shaman, got great reviews. And so we decided to go after crew wear. But what you're going to notice is we have to go through all new engineering to get this stuff done. So it's got full liners so that you add that strength all the way through. We couldn't nest the liner on that one because of how thin the canvas micarta is. Oh yeah, you kind of see that right here at the lock interface. Right, and so we're going to go actually across the board. We're going to be doing a lot of crew wear canvas in the future. <laughs> uh, the Military 2 is the first one we're launching, but don't be surprised if, if you start seeing more of these falling down the pipe. Well, I love it. And I'm glad that Eric got his, excuse me, that Sal got his way yes. because this this makes me happy. Yeah, he's been, been right before, so <laughs> yeah. he got this one right. Yeah, but that crew wear is crazy tough, has great edge retention. It's going to be great. And around the office, we talk about doing this patina challenge where you carry a knife for a year or whatever every day and just see how it darkens. And we've all been fighting over that paramilitary too with it. But now the whole lineup's going to get it. So we can all get our Yeah, it's going to take a little time, <laughs> and I'll, we'll reveal one at a time. So this time is the military too. Hope yeah. to deliver soon. Uh, and then in real reveal 15, you'll see a couple more. I love everything about that. Man, super exciting. And then we got little native lightweights. Yes, I love this knife personally. And that's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. It's such a joy to carry. If you've carried the little native, um, it's 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 thicker than this one. It's got thicker G10, thicker blade stock. Uh, we do make the little native in a compression lock and a G10. Beautiful knives. Mm -hmm. um, and the back lock version comes with. Uh, a stamp clip. Um, and so the Little Native, great knife, great reputation, um, but it's time to lighten it up. And so we thin the blade stock. It is a back lock rather than a compression. Um, we had to do the back lock because with a knife that thin and small and a side spring, it's going to want to push that lightweight apart. Mm -hmm. um, so really doing a lightweight just wasn't feasible. Um, if you're a fan of the Dragonfly, by the way, which has been in our uh, bread and butter for a long time, 25 plus years, mm -hmm. uh, this is right in that same size, uh, two and a half inches, deep pocket wire clip, bi-directional texturing, uh, strong lock, good self-close. and. I'll look, sorry to go off that, but great no, knife. you're good. Keep great going. Great knife. I love it. Um, yeah, and I like that it's slimmed up a little bit because, I mean, around the office, one of my buddies has a little native compression lock. And we like to pull out my shaman. Like, hey, look, it's a mini shaman. And it, like, it, it feels like one. It's a little knife that feels a lot bigger than it is. But this one, like you slimmed it down, it still feels bigger than it is. But like I picked it up, I'm like, I've felt little natives before. I know how heavy they are. This is noticeably lighter. Yeah, and top notch to the factory for their execution. You know, one of my favorite parts about that knife is the huh. lanyard. It was so hard to get in there. With the back lock <laughs> spring and the blade and the clip and stuffing a lanyard into a little tiny knife like that was tough. So if you are a lanyard fan, we got You're it You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, while I got the shaman out, I want to talk about the Bodacious. Yes. So, first of all, the name. Bodacious is a bull, correct? That was uh, an inspiration uh, for the name. Um, my father was a fan of that back in the day. I think the Bodacious was a bull people rode more than 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, so it is. Uh, it was a bull people rode, original uh, name behind the knife. I know most people think of other terms when they think of Bodacious. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was. that's why if you look at our photograph on the cover of our reveal, there's a cowboy, cowboy riding the Bodacious. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I think of a movie from the 80s where Keanu Reeves cut his teeth, yeah. but I'm an uncultured swine in this sure. situation. <laughs> yeah, but so I saw this and I read the dimensions and everything and I thought that is right in the same wheelhouse as the Shaman. It is the brother. It has a lot of the same design features, but it has some tweaks and I want to hear yeah. what those tweaks were and what led to them. Definitely give my father credit on this one. Uh, he wanted to make something like the Shaman that uh, gave you more edge, so the edge goes all the way back. We lost the forefinger trail, 
Um, it's got a nice guard on there, so you're not gonna slide forward on it. Uh, a good uh, gr hook at the back, so you won't slide off of it very easily. And based on the design, he went with a, a smooth G10, which is something you don't get a lot in the US facility. Um, but the design uh, gives you enough grip, you don't need as much peel ply. It's thinner than the Bodacious too. So you're gonna get it easier in and out of the pocket, a lighter weight. Um, mm -hmm. Hats off to our bevel grinding department too. I'm so proud of the bevel grinds on that. Uh, the way it's, the edge gets all the way back, that corner cut sweeps up. Then you have the thickness at the top, mm -hmm. which gives you that pryability. And then it even thickens a little at the tip, so the tip is a little bit stronger. I really recommend it, you know, if you're really into bevels, you, you learn to feel the edge through here. And when you feel this, it just, it's just the right thickness. It's, it's a beautiful grind. I'm very proud of the grinding department. So, way to go, Nick and Cristo. <laughs> Man. I, I, I wish I had that level of expertise. I just felt that edge and like, I mean, it feels like a grind. It feels like a good grind, yeah, but beautiful. I like, there's so much little stuff that goes into one of these. You know, the jimping, the lander hole, like the backspacer at the back, we do have a little backspacer, not only for rigidity, but it gives you something in the back of your palm if you want to hold it at the back and then balances the weight a little bit. Um, and you know, a lot of thought and evolution has gone into that piece. Like the stop pin, tons of strength in that stop pin. Most people wouldn't think it, but the way the stop pin is stepped and then sticks out like it does, um, it's a lot stronger than if you screw in a stop pin. Same you'll see on the, the Shaman. And so, um, you know, the, it brings you a lot of strength with that, that step stop pin and, and also reduces the weight and simplicity. Yeah, Man. just a beautiful piece. So, well it's actually done. what I'm carrying today. All Except right. For mine's actually peel ply. It's an earlier the sample. Peel ply. The then earlier we, then we said, ah, we don't need the peel ply. So. <laughs> well, that is really awesome. And then lastly, we've got more on the salt front. Yes, uh, definitely expanding our salts. Um, so these three are coming out very shortly. Uh, these are all in Magna Cut. One of the things we're doing in the US facility is we're designating our yellow color for Magna Cut, mm -hmm. and then we're going through a green color for our LC200N. Okay. Um, both incredibly corrosive resistant steels, um, very similar attributes in both of them, um, but gives you a difference in the look. Uh, why we went with yellow and green is because when you're diving through those atmospheres, it holds its color a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but you're gonna get all those attributes you get on your regular versions. Um, you'll see a coated hardware, naturally, for the corrosion resistance. Um, and then, you know, ball bearing tech, the ball bearing gives you a lot of strength. Um, your classic Manix with that wire clip, uh, then the lightweight pair of three, and, and then naturally the linerless chief. Uh, so, it, you know, lots of strength, lot, very low weight, but a lot of blade. Um, and so, yeah, the, the chief is going to be a nice addition to the salt series. Okay. So, you're still doing the LC shooter and the Magna Cut. When would you pick a Magna Cut and when would you pick an LC200N? Ooh, right now I think one of the first things I would look at is color because yeah. we did de designate the color and some people want to look at one color over the other. As far as corrosion resistance, they're incredibly similar. As far as edge retention, they're incredibly similar. Um, I really don't want to pit one against the other as far as which one's better on edge retention and corrosion resistance. They're, okay. they're pretty close. Um, I'll let the consumer figure out which one he likes better for his air edge retention and his corrosion resistance. Um, okay. But they're both good. You know, the, the LC200N uh, originally was a seal called Chronador, invented back in the 90s. I believe it was a NASA steel. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful chemistry. Back in the 90s, we were thinking it was amazing for its, its you know, corrosion resistance, but very hard to get. Um, and then Zap uh, took that chemistry, knowing uh, what Chronador was, uh, took it to the new level and developed the LC200N. Um, and then, you know, based on H2 and, um, you know, LC200N, I know corrosion became a thing, so people are really paying attention to that. I don't think Laren went after corrosion when he created Magnica. He was just looking for a great balance steel, and the corrosion was an additive. When you're looking for that perfect steel, you want edge retention, toughness, corrosion resistance. Yeah. And I do have to give, uh, you know, Magna Cut credit. They really nailed those three. Also, one of the great things about Magna Cut is its cost and its ability to fabricate it. 
Um, your LC200N is certainly a challenge to fabricate, a little bit harder to source. So um, I do have to give you know MagnaCut a lot of credit for what they brought to the market. I can really see why it's so popular. But we are going to offer both and continue to offer both. Yeah, and I like that you didn't do the full replace or reset or whatever, because one, you're taking a side, but I know that there is a huge fan base for LC200N out there. And for all you guys out there, they're still cranking out even new stuff in it. Yeah. And I love to see it. Yeah. Well, Eric, thank you so much for yeah, sharing thank with you. us. Yeah. I can listen to him talk all day long. I'm a nerd, but I have so much to learn. He has a lifetime of knowledge. Yeah. And well, I'm thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Right on. We'll see you next time. <laughs>